you'll have noticed week five, all the compound exercises go up in volume. But yeah, oh, I slipped down the stairs. I fell down the flight of stairs. See, so you look back towards the cable and you go through. More range of motion. Yeah. Hey guys, welcome back to a, another training session. So I am now eight days away from getting on the stage to the Road for World and I am feeling pretty excited. I am ready to be done, but we've still got a little bit of work to get done first. So today's session is going to be a lower body training session, mostly glute focused in fact. I had, um, I did drive to Orlando for posing practice yesterday. Really? Yeah, actually well, technically Lakeland. So I actually trained in Lakeland yesterday, which by the way, there's a really cool gym called Just Move. Um, if you want to ever do like a weekend training session where we've got a little bit more time, it was really nice. Really? It was enormous. Wow. So um, I would definitely be open to driving down there for, they have so many machines, like so many. <laughs> Is it four sets? today isn't it oh, damn it, it. Too. oh yeah full working set how week. come i keep reminding you <laughs> i wish i didn't remember <sighs> could have got away with three sets today i know you'll have noticed week five all the compound exercises um go up in volume so for every other week it's been three working sets week five and week six we go up to four working sets but it's just that so if you can get through that first movement, you can drop back and relax at three. <laughs> what are you going to go up to? 320. So that's 270. Yeah, I might just do one side okay. with the green, uh, with the green, with 45. And I'm just going to see how my butt is feeling. It's looking real green. <laughs> I don't even know why I said green. <laughs> Diet brain. Today's program, is this the long one or is that day three? No, this, I is, mean, this is long, but it's all like little exercises. It's a lower intensity session, but there's more. So it's mentally fatiguing. Okay. <laughs> we've got like the cable pull throughs, we've got glute okay. kickbacks, glute extensions, leg press. Oh, actually, you know what? I actually like today. Yeah, I do too. Yesterday, I think, was day three of this program. There's less compound movements in this program, it's all like isolation. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Eight reps. I think I might break if I go up anymore. <laughs> so um, I would always recommend or encourage you guys to actually go back to your previous week. So this is day four. So just to make sure that you aren't regressing on your workout, just make sure you go back and check what you actually did. So I was actually at another gym last week when I did this, so it looks significantly less. It says 250, but that machine was so weird. I swear people sometimes, whoever makes some of these machines, it's like, did you actually get on and see how it works? They're terrible. <laughs> <laughs> so it's nice to be back with a good one. <laughs> Did you hurt yourself with? Um, I think I started to feel it on a walking, the walking lunges. So they are, they definitely put you in a big stretch position. So when you're like the front foot forwards, your glute and hamstring are very lengthened. I just felt like a little twinge. And I was like, oh, I'll just keep going. It's not that bad. And it's just progressively gotten worse throughout the week. So yeah, this isn't too bad actually. I don't because it's like higher up in the glute that I feel it, but the lower glute hamstring is where I have been in a lot of pain. So I've just kind of dropped the loads down this week, Wednesday and Tuesday. Modified some of the range of motion as well, just to see if I can kind of perform the same movement without that kind of pain. And it's been all right, but I think I, think I can get through it. It's only another week. But yeah, oh, I slipped down the stairs. I fell down the flight of stairs yesterday. <laughs> Sorry, and then hence why I have it, guys, just check this out. So these are my real nail length. 
so my whole Are nail. Are you serious? You just got this done. I know. I was so upset. That's from falling down the stairs. Falling down the stairs. I have this. It's not bad, but it's. A, I got a little couple of scratches. <laughs> but I, you know, when you first like have an injury, and you're in a state of shock. <laughs> so I was like. You didn't feel I'm like okay. This so guy active. like was like, "Are you okay?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I think so." I just kind of got up and got in my car, and I was didn't have time to slow down. Yeah, then like 10 or 15 minutes into the drive, I'm like, "I might have broken something." Like my ass was sore, my ribs were hurting, and then I could start to feel that big scratch on my back. Like I was like, "I think I'm bleeding." <laughs> Let's go, T. Don't rush it. We have um, hip thrusts twice in this program, um, but I have included two different rep ranges. So this is, I guess, a little closer towards the strengths rep range. Um, and then the other training session uh, is a 15, <laughs> 15 rep set, which is just miserable. It's terrible. Girls, you know what I'm talking about. 15 reps on the hip thrust is not much fun. But are they pause? I think they're pause. Yeah. And pause pause thrust. reps too. So it's just a lot of time under tension. But I really like to incorporate both ranges. I think they really work nicely. Hand in hand. I was planning on walking this morning and uh, I had to stop in at the grocery store because right after I get done here, I'm actually going back to the house to film a full day of eating on misery calories. You have four plates on each side? Yeah. Damn. Shit. You didn't have any pre-workout this morning. I didn't have any. Oh, I had a half a coffee. I actually forgot to take caffeine. Pills. Say a prayer for me, guys. Job, girl. Yay, yay. All right, set three, same weight. Um, I'm going to do just one, one 45, yeah. 172, heart rate. 172. Oh my God. 172 heart rate on the left. It's going to be my heart rate later when I do some hit. All right, so last set, I kept my feet kind of low. And a little wide. I think this next set I will go up to like a, a high wide and get a little bit more hamstring and glute just so that I'm targeting a range of different areas. Done. No, that was my second set. You started. Did I? Did. Oh, I did. Yeah. My bad. <laughs> I hate when I do that. Not playing. Come on. Don't rush it. Get up. You're about to be black. black. That's new. That is a hollow. There's a I'm, hole I'm right here. Some... <laughs> that is weird. That must just be where your muscle naturally. It's where I'm wasting away. Always muscle mentioned. wasting. <laughs> God, no! Please don't say that. 
Let's go a uh, 25 instead. Is there one over there? Yeah. another day. Next exercise on this program is a curtsy dumbbell RDL. So it literally looks exactly like a curtsy. So you're literally just going to pop that foot just to the side. I'm going to try and keep square when you go down. Nice flat straight back. You don't want to be going down like that. Straight back and it really just increases the stretch on your glute and your hamstring. So there's nothing magic about it, but it's a little bit more isolated for glute hamstring. Um, I really enjoy it, but you will have to regress your weights fairly significantly compared to what you would normally do for like a standard dumbbell RDL. Um, so if it's your first time doing this, Pick a lightweight. Yeah. <laughs> I think I made the mistake of grabbing the 75s. I was like, yeah, let's do it. Mom. Oh. Oh, okay. Dude, I'm telling you, the conditioning with these. What's your heart rate? 81. <laughs> Lies. No, 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 it's like from two minutes ago. 135. Shut up. 135. I'm waiting for it to go up. No, that's it. 135. There's something wrong with me then. <laughs> like if we both do hit for the same amount of time at the same level. Yeah, I got more muscle. I got more calories to expend. Makes sense. It's true. Bigger it's body. Still. Relatively. I, who knows? Who knows? I think I probably would expend less because I you have, have more slightly higher fitness. Yeah. My cardiovascular fitness is... So you mean pretty. you've like adapted? Yeah. Yeah. I'm lazy as fuck, so <laughs> I'm not adapted to... <laughs> I haven't adapted to shit. I didn't do cardio my off season, so... <laughs> You're like, I like to walk. <laughs> oh, all right, all right, let's go. Good, T. Good, don't rush. There you go. Yeah, my heart rate didn't get over 94 that time. <laughs> you didn't get over 94? Or I'm dead. Hey, last hey, hey. <laughs> This is part of the workout. Yeah, what are you gonna do instead of cable pull throughs or are you gonna I'm try gonna them? I've been doing them. Oh good. Yeah, I've been widening my stance. It's been helping. Yep. I think because my femurs are so freaking long that if I don't 
spread them out, it's like I'm off balance. Yeah, that makes sense. I think the other thing that I noticed you, and Shelly has the same issue. The pelvic tilt? Yes, you have the opposite. Um, so I'm very anteriorly tilted. I'm posterior. She's like basically walks around like this. Yeah. All day. Yeah, <laughs> so when I'm like just sitting, I'm just like. Yeah, here. so like, that exercise really requires you to get into the opposite position. <laughs> yeah, because you're going like this. It's like when I come through, I gotta make sure that I'm... And keep your arms nice and long as well. That's the one you always... Weird movement, I'm just like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, straight arms, guys. Almost there. I feel like I complained about this last time. As much as I like having access to a cable, and I'm very grateful that I have a gym. But I can train it and I'm not forced to be at home at the moment. I'm gonna get down like this to be able to see what weight you're lifting. So we're gonna walk it forward so that you've got a good amount of um, I guess range of motion. I'm gonna keep my arms pretty long. So T had his kind of bent. I tend to keep mine pretty straight. And then I wanna go through and kind of look back underneath me. Tuck your chin. the cable when you go through more range of motion yeah yeah so that just added like two inches to her length so I'm glad I told that <laughs> I felt like I was upside down I know and that's the thing you got to kind of recenter yourself like I always feel like uh, I have to find my stability or like mid ground first but yeah, in this exercise, you're always going to have to kind of keep some of your body weight slightly shifted forwards so that it doesn't like pull you back. That was which, my problem too. Which takes a to lot like of getting used to, but forward. yeah, it's a good exercise. Notice how she's not kind of coming back up to hyper extend her back. You don't want to be finishing like this. You want to come back to a neutral spine, tuck your tailbone under, keep your chin in. I often see people trying to do this and they finish and they're like looking up like that. <laughs> don't do that. It's too much load on stress on your back. Uh, this is probably one of my favorite exercises. I don't do it often because I like to save it because I really look forward to it. <laughs> But it's a good one. You can do this with a resistance band as well. So if you don't have access to tables at the moment if you are training from home. So something like this resistance. See, these are about a 35 pound resistance, but as you get stronger, you can start to increase that weight. And then all you need to buy yourself if you are training from home is one of these, this is called a snap hook. And then some kind of handle. You can buy like handles in bunches. When I bought mine, mine came with one of these, came with a little easy bar, straight bar, a couple of single handles. And then you can basically do, you've got a set of bands, two sets of bands even, because then you can do doubles. Um, and then your snap hooks. You can basically replicate anything <coughs> that you would do on a cable system. So right down to, you know, wide grip pull down. As long as you've got something that you can attach it to. <coughs> Could be your staircase, park rail, whatever. Yeah, I had a, a wonderful COVID experience because I just stocked up, got all my bits of equipment and didn't really have too many, too many limitations. Is this our last session before you fly out or do you No, have... no, no, I fly out Tuesday. Tuesday. So we'll train on Monday. Okay. And I think 
I have to train on Tuesday morning. Oh, okay. I have to look at my flight. But I still do have flight chickens on Tuesday. <laughs> so it's going to be like in between airports on the plane. One leg down, one to go. These are the bane of my existence. I hate this exercise. <laughs> so again, guys, just thinking about where you want to put your foot in this um, particular exercise. You want to target a little bit more glute medius and center glute. Kick your heel out, or oh, sorry, your toe out, and keep a good amount of your heel or as much as possible on that weight plate. So that's where you can drive the most amount of force. You don't have a lot of drive in your toe. So good part of your foot on the plate and somewhat close to the handles. I've seen people kind of back in this spot with their arms outstretched or like the little diagram says here. They're like just standing nice and tall. You want to get over and down to drive through your glutes. It's like an endurance event, isn't it? <laughs> I forgot to check my heart rate last time. Kendra, if anything, two legs, you're just going for so long. <laughs> yeah, it's like 20 reps per set. This is why it's important to rest between legs. Like, if you feel like after that first set of 10, you are absolutely gassed, in which case, I wouldn't be surprised. Like, you have to have pretty good fitness not to be gassed after a set of 12. Take your time recovering. I know I just jumped straight in, but I'm kind of it isn't too bad <laughs> but for any other exercise rest so those are going to limit your potential volume um, if you try and jump back into it the shoes that i am wearing these have like a one inch high platform i feel like i'm walking on platforms to be honest yes they're very flat which is good for lifting because you can generate a lot of force but because i'm high off the ground i feel like um I am kind of limiting myself a little bit um, as opposed to wearing like a strict like lifting shoe or what T actually has on even though they're both converse hers doesn't have the platform and that inch um, of padding so I'm struggling to get the same kind of connection um, with the weight weight and I felt it yesterday actually I was training these shoes when I was squatting um, and I'm just a little bit less stable. These are obviously significantly better than wearing like a tennis shoe or something with a lot of sponge um, because it's flat, but still not optimal, <laughs> especially for this exercise where there's such a small area, like a surface area to put your foot on. So it feels hard today. I'm gonna whinge. <laughs> Eight. It's okay. An eight. Eight. Eight out of ten. Um, when you had your diet break, what calories did you hit? About nineteen hundred. Um, it averaged out to be that way. Said some higher days. Obviously, yeah. at the beginning of the week, I was. Um, yeah. But I made sure to average around nineteen hundred. Okay. Uh, and I played it safe because I could have gone higher, but I was like. Mm. Yeah. Um, and I think because you've been dieting for so long as well, so tea started prep in February. Been going for like eight months now, so but you're crazy. <laughs> I question if I was even in a deficit though for the past X amount of weeks. You know, I always wasn't making any progress, so it's pretty much maintaining. Yeah, the difficulty with that, I guess, is like you're consuming really low calories for an extended period of time. So it's like now you're starting to a compromise like the amount of effort that you can invest in your training sessions because you're on low calories. So for a lot of people, like they'll start to see strength decrements. And then, you know, if let's say T and I both came in and we both were feeling like we've been like dieting for seven months. We're on low calories, energy's low, and we start lifting 20 or 30 pounds less per exercise. When you work out what that training volume amounts to versus what your potential could be if you were eating a little bit more. Yeah, there'd probably be a notable difference like that um, in what we would lift. So you're now risking losing lean body mass and you're also just drawing out time in a, a low calorie period and risking your um, basal metabolic health. So now your BMR starts to drop as a result. 
so it's a hard place to be in, isn't it? Yeah. And then if you go back to 1900 calories or something that's just normal, it's not even like a crazy amount of calories, um, because you're, you've been in a deficit, deficit for so long and your new maintenance calories has now dropped so low, you're in this position where you can rapidly regain body fat because you've had so many, so many months of like adapting to lower calories. So it just makes it hard. Like for the competitors out there that are having to kind of do back-to-back -back shows because the IFBB is kind of based on a point system, it really forces them to have to compete regularly to get the numbers up. Set points are secondary. Yeah. So obviously if you win. If you win, you're straight in, but T's least favorite exercise. Hates it. When you are setting up a machine like this, the higher up your foot, so you've obviously got different pulleys here, so you can take this all the way up. In that position, you've got a lot more quad recruitment. So if you're trying to isolate your glutes, take it all the way down, so to the bottom. regular leg extension so no Maya rep sets girls nothing it's just 12 reps Man, out let's go So I'm trying to do like a pulse squat here. I probably went a true pulse squat or I wouldn't come all the way up. But that weight is kind of challenging. <laughs> so honestly when you come into a full extension, some of the load goes away. <laughs> So next set, I'll probably try and stay a little bit lower and keep it as a true kind of working within that range of motion, not coming up to full extension so that the load stays in the legs. up 170 conditioning and still targeting a muscle group that is important to me <laughs> sorry you notice T and I are doing slightly different variations of this exercise so this is like a landmine goblet squat so she's holding it long the reason that she's standing on the plates is to help her get further range of motion because if she did not stand on the plates and she went down the weight is probably going to hit the ground before she can get to depth. It's the same reason why when we do like an RDL, you elevate yourself. 
so that you can take the kettlebell all the way down lower than ground level where your feet are to get full range of motion so that is why she's doing that variation for me I'm not really trying to get that low I'm trying to just pump up my glutes and a little bit of quad as well quad pump and I don't need to be elevated to get full range so some subtle differences there but really it just depends on what your individual goals are so we've probably gotten to the point now I've been saying this for a few videos and clearly I always leave them in my car and I'm too lazy to go and get them but just doing body weight for this is probably getting a little bit easier so what we've had to do well certainly for me I started increasing the rep range so instead of doing 15 reps with a little bit of a pause I'm kind of having to go to 20 in order to feel like I'm hitting the intensity that I'm meant to be training at which at the moment for this week it's meant to be an RIR1 which means you have one repetition left in the tank before you are at failure so for me to do that with a leg lower it's probably like 25 reps and it's very time consuming so if you can get yourself some little ankle weights I think these are two and a half pounds each and they easily just wrap around and they use these for our hanging leg raises as well off the cables for a knee, a knee tuck or a straight leg raise uh, and I'm sure there's lots of other things that you could do That would be very 80s. <laughs> this is our last exercise. We got one more set after this and then we're done. my final session of the week next week is peak week so it's been a pretty rough 12 weeks well actually no that's a lie it's really the last five weeks have been the most challenging I think just from hunger maintaining like good energy trying to maintain focus um, you know with work and responsibilities that I have to my clients and kind of not letting these I guess this is very much a personal endeavor for me so I don't want that to interfere, you know, too significantly with everything else. But the trouble is like bodybuilding at this level, you know, competing at a world championships and you're going for the title. Like it, it requires an almighty amount of effort and focus and diligence. And I just feel like it requires a very specific style of life, lifestyle that I probably don't have. Or if you are willing to invest yourself, you know, as much as it requires, it's hard there's a lot of sacrifice so to have gotten through the last 12 weeks and that's all this prep was it might have been 12 weeks and a few days when I decided that I was gonna give it a go it's been very rewarding because I have had to overcome a lot of I think psychological challenges physiological challenges if I think back to two years ago when I was competing at Worlds I was still kind of trying to overcome a pretty severe eating disorder so you guys have probably seen my story and that struggle or battle for over 15 years. So to get through this prep, pretty much free of that, like I freed myself of that. It's been quite an accomplishment. Like I'm very proud of myself for kind of getting through this. So I'm so excited. I'm just ready to get on that dang stage and do my thing. I did some posing yesterday for a couple of hours out of the gym in Lakeland. Um, they had a huge big studio. We cranked up the tunes. Guys, 
Thank you so much for watching today. If you would like to join any of my training programs, you can go to the BioLane Workout Builder. We have over 50 different types of training programs for beginners through to advanced athletes. They have video demonstrations and tutorials. They have exercise alternatives. If you don't have access to a piece of equipment, they give you options for home workouts, gym-based programs, um, and for a variety of different uh, goals and interests. So strength, powerlifting, bodybuilding, glute specific, female focus. So if you don't know anything about the Workout Builder, you can go and check that out by clicking some of the links here in the description. And if you want to use our nutrition coaching app, Carbon Diet Coach, all the links for that are provided for you as well in the description. So go and check those out. And I will be seeing you next week for Peak Week.